Hi, it's Saki. Welcome back to my channel. So I was not a big fan of New Year resolutions or listing up goals because I liked having some flexibility or I thought I did. And I feel like it limited myself in a way by setting up some goals. And I would rather have reacted to what was in front of me instead of being stuck with my rules that I myself created. But this year, I felt different. As a freelancer with two or three different kind of jobs, my schedule is always uncontrollable or unexpected. Everything I do needs a certain level of commitment. That's why it's sometimes hard for me to upload even one video in a week when I'm in a production which requires me to work almost 20 hours a day, six days a week. So many things I want to keep as a habit would be gone while I'm in a production, like reading, exercising, running, learning languages. And when I come back from that busy schedule after a couple months, it's no longer being a habit anymore. So I want to quit this. I want to have a healthy and productive life consistently despite whether or not I am double or triple duty. So I decided to list up all my small goals this year and I thought it would be interesting to share the language part of it. Okay, so enough talking, let's dive into it. For this year, I am focusing on two languages, which is English and French. So let's start with French. I think I've mentioned before that I'm learning French, but probably never talked about the reason. More and more I dive into the world of art, more and more I notice that we cannot talk about art without knowing its loot, mainly coming from France and Greece. So I have been wanting to study Roman language or French. This is just an example, but one of the best physical theater schools is in France. It's called L'Ecole Jacques Lecoq. And I would love to read the book in French, or at least I would like to understand a certain word, which would help me to feel what it's like a little bit more than reading in English. And maybe someday I can participate the summer class or something like that. In terms of my French learning history, I don't have much actually. I took online class, I would say less than a year. He's a French teacher who lives in Japan close to my place. And I really enjoyed his class, but it's just I got too busy to keep taking his online classes. So I'm not completely clueless because of that history. So I am familiar with some structures, some sounds or some words, but I am a total beginner. So first goal that I have is review my grammar book. So I already have a French grammar book. So instead of buying one, I should start from what I already have and understand what's in it perfectly. I also know that I just don't have much vocabulary and I just have to remember all the conjugation. So I will keep focus on them first and move on to the next textbook when I need to. The next one is take at least one lesson on Duolingo every day. Duolingo is my favorite app, which I probably didn't mention that much before, but I used this app for years, even before it's getting this big and famous. I think the first language that I did on Duolingo was Spanish, I believe, and I was probably not even in college. Anyway, I love this app because it feels like it's a game and one lesson is very short and quick. And I think Duolingo is perfect for beginners, especially just get to used to that language with having fun. The third goal is take 10 hours of French italki lessons. So italki is another famous online language app where you can find a native speaker of the language that you want to learn. Cambly is only for English, but you can find a lot of languages in italki. So I'm planning to use that for my French learning. This would be and it should be towards the end of the year because I'm scared of wasting my money and time on taking online lessons when I have almost nothing to say. But I would start as soon as I get comfortable with my French grammar because I also know that the sooner you start talking, the sooner you get better. The last one, which is a little questionable for me yet, is take Damon Dominic's French course which I am very intrigued actually. I know many YouTubers have talked about his classes and then talk about his channel and a lot of people found it super valuable. Domen Dominic is an American YouTuber living in Paris and he has made some French learning videos and I love them. I love his channel, I love his aesthetic and I love the way he teaches. I need to have a little bit more research and then see if it's right for me or not, but that's on my list too. 
Okay, moving on to English, which probably you guys are interested in. So right now, I'm in a very awkward stage in English, where I live in a state I use English every single day for my work and for my life. So I don't feel a strong need to study English. But at the same time, I notice myself using the same vocabulary over and over again. And I sometimes notice my friends understanding me, not with what I am saying with my words, but with what they're guessing because of my lack of vocabulary, if that makes sense. I basically have stopped studying English and then just live and learn. And I do think that ultimately, everything I experience here is my English learning. By the way, I live in New York City right now, uh, if you don't know, and I am from Japan, my first language is Japanese. But I also decided to force me a little bit more this year. The first goal that I have this year is go through distinction again. Let me grab them. So these are distinctions. Hi, Atsum. I think some of you already know that I used distinction when I came here three years ago. Distinctions are the great vocabulary books made by Atsu, who is also my friend. We collaborated together on our YouTube channel, so if you haven't checked it, please check them out. But I haven't touched them for a while, like three years or two and a half years. And then these are the only vocabulary books that I have here. I think I'm gonna use the app this time instead of the books and basically go through all the three books that I have in the app just to remind myself some words that I haven't used for a while. What I like about the Distinction app is they also have an audio practice session as well as learning vocabulary and I like to go through a, a daily vocabulary lesson first and then move on to the audio part which is way better than just seeing the words and then feeling like I got them already. I need to practice them in order to use them in real life. The second goal that I have for English is watch three interviews a week. By the way, when you set up the goal, I think you can set up the objective goal, which is a larger goal, like, you know, improve my pronunciation in English, improve blah, 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 get better at blah, blah, blah. And then you should set up some action goals with some numbers in it. So for here, watch three interviews a week. It's my action goal. This is actually more for my study in my area rather than uh, for my English. I have been trying to watch an interview or documentary of a director that I like or I am interested in just to learn their journey and get some inspiration because most of the time I have an anxiety about my future and about my career. So I need something to make myself feel like I am learning and growing every single day. So length of videos doesn't really matter, but in terms of English learning, it could be for my listening skill or I usually just listen to some interviews and whenever I find a word that is not familiar with me, I just stop a video, Google that word and then add to my vocabulary list. And the third one is make more English content. Making a content in English is actually really helpful for me to improve my English. When I edit and I see myself speaking English, which I hate actually, I find a lot of mistakes in terms of grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Also, I found it interesting that whenever I talk to my friend, I talk more naturally. But when I try to talk in English like this to you guys, my English gets a little weird. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I have a script in front of me and I'm trying to read some parts instead of just talking as I like. So I want to keep practicing a little bit more in terms of talking in public in English especially. And then this leads another goal of this year which is take daily pronunciation lesson on Elsa every day. So as you know, I use Elsa for my pronunciation practice. If you haven't watched that video, I explain how I improve my English pronunciation and then how I think about pronunciation in general. Anyway, I have been using this app for a while and exploring which tool would be the best for me and I found that I liked to use the daily practice the best. Some of the lessons in other topics like study by topic or improve your pronunciation, uh, skills, blah blah blah, those are a little easy for me sometimes but daily lessons are perfect for me. It takes less than 10 minutes and I found it very important to be aware of my pronunciation every single day to get it better and seeing which sound I'm pronouncing different visually really helps me to 
be mindful for how I sound. Doing it every day sounds a lot, but it's just less than 10 minutes, so why not? I should just make the time for it. So Elsa kindly offered us the discount links, and it ends on January 31st. So for one link, you can get 7 days pro membership for free. Pro membership is something that I use actually. Uh, and then the other link gives you an exclusive discount of 30% off of one year membership. That's amazing. And then, oh my god, 80% off of the lifetime membership. I think I'm gonna get that. So you can save 50,000 yen. That's a lot of money. I always always say that i only introduce the apps that i use which i thought that it's worth to share to everybody so i highly recommend you to try that first if you don't feel like that's for you that's totally okay you don't have to but if you feel like it i think it's a good chance to start elsa and then get your pronunciation better and better all right, so that's it for today. I guess that was a lot of information, but that was my language goal for 2023. I just think that it's so important to do something every single day, even just to get to used to that language or get better at that language. And then those small efforts that you make every single day will eventually make a lot of differences. So what is your language goal for 2023? Please leave some comments and tell me about your language goals. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you like it and then see you guys in the next video. Bye!